Welcome, film fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, where we're spending the holidays with Uncle Adam. I'm Matt Presents, joined, as always, by my Meshugana co-host. Hello, I am Mackle Doyle. And, uh, t- today we're watching Adam Sandler's two holiday films, Hubie Halloween and Eight Crazy Nights, and we are joined by the number one fan of these two films. <sighs> Hey, it's uh, it's Ziff. Not another name, just Ziff. Don't say the other name. I, I don't, I don't associate with that name anymore. Just Ziff. You know, just, just trust me on that one. Uh, how's it going? I'm a huge, huge fan of uh, anything but these films. But thank you for having me. Either way, uh, <laughs> yeah. Now hold on. You, you were the one who don't showed us Hugh. No, no, no. I insist. It was you. I insist. After you. Um. Oh boy. I, I, like, it's it's interesting having you a part of this discussion because Mike and I for years have been talking about Eight Crazy Nights. And, yeah. Uh, and years ago, I think I did. I was I the one that introduced you guys to Hubie Halloween. Yes. Yeah, it was yeah. your movie night pick. You were definitely the one who showed <laughs> us. <laughs> listen, Hubie listen, 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 listen. <laughs> I I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Um. No, but it's it's going to be an interesting discussion. I feel like because these are two oh, Adam yeah. Sandler films that I feel like um. At least for us, there's a lot to talk about for our friend group. I think Hubie Halloween in general is just another Happy Madison film, but I guess there's things to compare it with Eight Crazy Nights with. I didn't really think Eight Crazy Nights really had a competitor, so it's interesting yeah, to talk about. Yeah, I mean, there is that. I, I, We did kind of just pick these two movies because we <laughs> wanted you on an episode. It really feels like, like just a random choice, like uh, a Hubie Halloween, I guess. There's nothing else you can compete with Eight Crazy Nights. <laughs> Eight Crazy Nights is like okay, so the yeah, like Zach mentioned the history a little bit, but I just want to go into that a little bit more because it's like it it's gonna be like if we ever do if we ever pair Shark Tale up with something, it's like one of those movies that has become such a meme for me. Um, Honestly, like Shark Tale I, and Eight Crazy Nights sounds like a great like two <laughs> movies to compare. Like that's an interesting <laughs> one. I feel like there's a lot to talk about there. Oh, uh, yeah, honestly, it, it's just like one of those movies where I, I, I'm going to really try not to let my bias get in the way here because because of how much joy this movie has given me outside of uh, quality of life reasons. Um, I, I, I don't I don't want to be unfair because I it, I don't know. I, I, I think sometimes the movie becomes so, such an ironic movie for you that you start to kind of enjoy it. That's for me, at least. Like, I kind of like Shark Tale. I kind of like Eight Crazy Nights. It has very little to do with the movies themselves. I Shark Tale versus Eight Crazy Nights might have been a funnier match. <laughs> it would have been. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, they're both really, nostalgic. They're, they're not Adam Sandler films, both of them, but, like, they at least have, like, this nostalgia for them. Kind of came around that same decade. And, and I mean, they're both movies, I mean, for one thing, they're both movies that we have memed on yes. constantly. Yes, and the internet and memes also, on them all the time. Yeah, they're also both movies that are, like, not really that good, but also, like, they're so fascinating in their badness. They're easy to rewatch with how interestingly uh, the, the, the choices were from the people creating them. I do also want to shout out the OG podcast. Uh, they both are at both of like these like fucking running bits with both of these two movies came from Duckcast. <laughs> the first Shark Tale video was a Duckcast episode. The uh, Eight Crazy Nights started with an argument me and Zach had at the beginning of that show. <laughs> um, and it just like turned into this thing where I started spamming bum bitty 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 bum bum <laughs> and like so many of the songs. <laughs> I, I would just constantly play it at the end of episodes. It was funny at first, and then it got so fucking annoying. <laughs> Our first... He just kept doing it. it. It always stayed funny to me, but I could understand how it would annoy other people. I will say, it's also... Duckcast was also the first uh, time the three of us sat down and had a film discussion, mm-hmm. so... Just remembering the... Again, just wanted to give a special shout-out to the to the old Duckcast. Yeah, it's cancelled. Anyway. It's over. It's oh, dead. It's isn't isn't episode one hundred still coming out? It's gonna. Or is it like we'll do it? I don't know. Where'd you read that from? Reddit? Like 
Yep, I, 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 I read that off of the extremely popular r slash uh, duckcast subreddit. Pull it up right now. Prove it. That was a joke. That was a there joke? no okay. duckcast okay. subreddit. That's what I thought. I guess I'll I'll introduce UB Halloween. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about UB Halloween. Yay. Since, since, see, for us, this is still relevant. Halloween hasn't happened yet. This episode is coming out like four days after Halloween, so. <laughs> I was I was waiting on doing this like earlier in the month. That's, that's when I thought we were going to do this. And then like the month just went on and went on. I never was never contacted about this. It's like, oh, yeah, we're doing it like at the end of the month. I'm like, oh. Good luck pulling this out early. Yeah, we 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 picked this for November just to sort of split the difference gotcha. between Halloween and Hanukkah. And we already did a Halloween episode. Ah, that makes sense. We we did we did do a Halloween episode. So Hubie Halloween uh, is the story of Hubert Dubois, played obviously by Adam Sandler. He is a man who who loves Halloween, but is very concerned with Halloween safety. Almost overly concerned with Halloween safety. And to that end, he, he sort of annoys a lot of the people in the town. So they sort of take it upon themselves to, like, you know, uh, sort of mess with Hubie. Because he's, he's sort of this unpopular guy. He's sort of this guy that annoys everyone that no one really likes. But on one particular Halloween, uh, you know, there's a new guy in town, and based on everything we, we see from him, he might be a werewolf. Also, there's a, a someone from the local insane asylum who's escaped and gotten out, and, and wouldn't you know it, suddenly people start disappearing on Halloween night. And, and it's up to Hubie to sort of figure out what's going on with this... This mystery of the disappearing people. So, so when I was a kid, right, uh, in elementary school, in gym class, they they would like teach us dance moves to like so in in the month of October. We would spend the month of October learning and practicing these dance moves to a handful of Halloween songs, and then on Halloween we would all get together and we would perform these... We would perform the dances for our parents in costume, right? And and the songs that they just consistently did every year were The Monster Mash, One-Eyed, One-Horned, Flying Purple People Eater, and the Ghostbusters theme. Two of these songs appear in the first five minutes of this film, <laughs> and one of them appears at least in, like, the first half of the film. So, so they, they, they got all the Halloween classics in this movie. Oh, yeah. What'd you guys think of Hubie Halloween? Uh, it's a weird... I, I think I saw the film two or three times, I think. I think I saw it the first time... Did I watch it with you guys the first time, or did I say I watched it before you guys, and then I watched it with you, you again? You watched it before. Yeah, wow, that's cr- so three those. times. That's crazy. I thought <laughs> that's really wild. So it it feels like a, just any other Happy Madison film, but it's like because it's like a more modern Happy Madison film. You get like stuff that opens with Ben Stiller's old character from Happy Gilmore reprising his role, and it's just a really weird <laughs> yeah. like nostalgia thing. Like it's not like its own thing anymore. Now it's like oh, remember this character, and then they just do all these other references like O'Doyle and all that. There's a lot of Adam That's Sandler That's kind of a thing Adam film. Sandler has done in a few of his that. movies is just have, like, other characters come back. I feel like it doesn't happen as often, and then this film, just something struck with me where it feels like they did it, did it more in this the, one. I don't know. This, this one, I think, was more specific with it, but, like, yeah. that has always kind of happened in yeah. his movies. Yeah. I don't know. This, this, this film, it, there's so much to say, like... I don't want to flash forward too much before we get into the big discussion, but it feels like a Disney Channel film a lot of the time with adult mm-hmm. humor. That's what that's the that's my overall uh, overall thought on the movie throughout watching it. Was, it. it was Zach. Zach made the comparison, not me. I do that way too often on my channel. It's just like this feels like a Disney movie. I, like I they do agree they even get a lot of original. like Disney Channel kid actors. Uh, yeah. And SNL actors in this film. Yeah. 
and they and they show up like they're just they're framed in a way it's like oh remember you know this person like a special guest kelly berglund from lab rats like here here they are disney channel stars are a little interest in this one because they pay tribute to yeah. I, um that one kid i think cameron, cameron voice voice and they have some of his co-stars that were on that one show i think it was called jesse they had um, two yeah yeah, so they have them in there. Um, so it's like maybe that's why. Maybe they just. I I'm, I will say too. Like I remember the... watching the film. I had the opinion that I had earlier. Like it feels like a Disney Channel film. And then like, but when the credit happened with that honorable mention, or uh, just in in memory of, uh, I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But um, also they do it all the time though. Adam Sandler films, Disney Channel actors getting put in there. Yeah, least, I mean, at least they, recent ones. They paid tribute to Cameron Boyce because he was in the uh, Grown Ups movies. Like, they clearly had a history of working yeah. with the kid. Um, I uh, I definitely see that Disney Channel comparison with like just like the setting too. Like the the set the set of this town could be a Halloween Disney Channel movie, one hundred percent. Like it looks like it, um, and it all takes place in the town. You know, they they don't really venture out and do anything crazy with it. It's pretty. They try to make the town look nice. They try to make the set look nice, but they don't, like, characters aren't really traveling much is the bottom line. Like, they're not doing anything crazy. Yeah. Um, I think that, yeah. Um, I will say it's, like, kind of like, yeah, it's, it, it, humor-wise, it's definitely the same impact as a Disney Channel movie for me where it's, like, yeah, it is definitely more adult. I'm still not laughing. <laughs> like, like, I wouldn't be laughing at a Disney Channel movie either, necessarily. I'd say there's a couple of lines here and there that got me with this one. But I find most of it really insufferable in this movie. I, I find the humor in this movie, like... Like, either I just get, like, most of it. Most of it I just have, like, no reaction to. Most of it I'm just like, okay... That was a joke, I guess. And, like, occasion the, the best this movie gets is, like, it'll get, like, a single, like, <laughs> out of me. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, that was, that was kind of funny. I like that all the news reporters are dressed as Harley Quinn. That's kind of funny. I like the, the, Maya Rudolph and, um. Tim Meadows. Fuck, Tim Tim Meadows, thank you. Like, how how she's, like, never sexually satisfied with him. Just doesn't want to have sex with him at all. But, like, I don't know. Those aren't, like, hilarious jokes. Those are just jokes that make me kind of go, ah, that's kind of funny. But, I mean, there's, there's also no jokes in there that I'm like, oh, that was so bad. Oh, that was just yeah. an oh, awful joke. It never does that. It's, it's a very innocent comedy film uh, when you think about it. Now, I, I might, might keep going with what you were going to say, because I do have an, another topic discussion about this film afterwards. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, curious about. I'm going to have to disagree a little bit with the fact that there isn't like anything painful in this movie. I found a lot of these characters like unbearable to be around. And some of the jokes... Like, maybe the joke is that they were supposed to be bad, but I mean, there's that one kid in the school saying, like, oh, you're dressed as someone who doesn't know who her father is. Oh, wait, that's I... just, like, it's just, like, I, and, I know, there's, like, several lines in the movie like that where I'm just, like, fuck off. <laughs> I, like, that's horrible. That, honestly, that is, like, a, a, a movie trope I kind of love. Just the weirdly specific bullying. <laughs> it's like, oh, why don't you dress as a kid who doesn't know who her parents are? And it's like, what a weird thing to make fun of someone for. Wait, what What about also, like, Ray Liotta's character, like, during his father's funeral? Like, Hubie's, like, consoling him, like, oh, I'm so sorry and everything. They're having a really nice conversation, and then he just pushes Hubie into his dad's grave. <laughs> no, I... The crazy thing about this movie is, like, everyone in this town just, like, fucking hates Hubie. Except for, like, the five characters that it's plot <laughs> important like him. And those characters are all like, oh, I love Hubie. He's the nicest guy. He's so great. They're raised by the mom, so they were raised right, and everyone else was raised by the devil. That's the joke. <laughs> there, there's just, like, no... There's no middle ground. Like, yeah. everyone in this town hates him or they love him. <laughs> either you love him, either you think Hubie is, like, the nicest guy, or you have dedicated your life to tormenting <laughs> this severely autistic man. 
They do that a lot with Adam Sandler films. A lot of autistic humor. Like, oh, laugh at the autistic guy. He's different and weird. They did that in Eight Crazy Nights with Whitey, although I will they say do. on a rewatch of Eight Crazy Nights, they don't do it nearly as much as Hubie Halloween does. Yeah. It's mainly just Davey being mean to Whitey in that movie. But he's also the main character who you know is going to have a redemption and bada bada bing. This is just all the characters, it could be all I mean, I mean, all the characters just hating the main character for no reason and not getting any valid redemption. I thought there were some okay visual jokes in the movie, surprisingly. Like, a lot of the scenes of Hubie on his bike, like, I mean, I remember there's, like, one shot where he, like, jumps off of it and the bike Like, like he's somehow, forward. like, incredibly talented with, like, dodging yeah. things like yeah. spider sense. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you, you, mean, you mean the shot where he drinks the raw eggs and then Don't projectile say it. vomits. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, I just, not my favorite scene. Kind of, a lot like some of the gross-out humor in Eight Crazy Nights, like, that was, yeah. I do, I'm trying, there definitely was, like, a line or two that made me laugh in the movie. I'm having a hard time remembering what they were, to be honest. Uh, it's, I would agree that, like, for the most part, it's inoffensive. I just find the characters, like, very frustrating, but it's not, like, yeah, that, that's, like, the worst thing I could say about it, really, is, I like, this, most of the characters in this are really frustrating. Hubie himself is not, like... I don't find him annoying. I don't like they, they clearly clearly are trying to make him likable. You're clearly supposed to feel bad that all this shit has happened to him. I don't find him very endearing either, but he was fine. Like Sandler has played some really annoying characters in movies before. And I think Hubie is completely passable. I do have a question for you guys though. Hmm. I, and I don't, I might be overthinking this one, but I think of like shit like the Ernest movies, like this being Hubie Halloween, like like the title like establishes like Hubie, like as like oh yeah, this is a known name, this is a known character. Do you guys think that they like were kind of baiting to see like uh could we make like to get more Hubie, Hubie holidays? Movies. Like yeah, can we do hmm. like a Hubie series? That's an interesting comparison. I didn't. I, I never thought about that until you just brought that up. Because I remember watching. I just vaguely remember the Ernest movies, like the Halloween one. When I was younger. But I don't. I haven't watched them forever. But that is a very valid. Uh, I, I, idea. I watched all all of the Ernest movies like right at the start of the pandemic. It was my first. I, I should ranking. rewatch them someday. Those are yeah. Those are my list. But uh. Yeah, no, Scared, Hubie. Scared Stupid was one of the better ones. Yeah. The Hubie holiday movies is an interesting idea, though, that I don't think they went, they were thinking of that. Because, like, Hubie's big thing is, like, oh, he's scared of everything, and that kind of fits well with Halloween. I don't think you can. I, I don't think he has other things, other quirks for other holidays. I think that's just the fear quirk, and that just only works with Halloween. You can't bring it out anywhere else. I think that's just it, period. But that's just me. Yeah, I I feel like his whole thing in this movie is that he's like really into Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and also they kind of have the joke of like the the girl he's into. Her last name is Valentine. So I I think that's sort of like a, like a comparison there of like Hubie Halloween and and Valerie Valentine. That's not her name. What's her name? Something Valentine. I don't know. It, it Valentine is the last name. Violet, Violet Valentine. Violet. Mm. Now, I are we done with this topic? Because I have an interesting discussion here. Sure. About Hubie sure. Holiday. Uh, so kind of going back to like the whole Disney Channel vibe thing, I f uh, I was watching the film, and s a lot of it feels like I just don't know who the audience is for. Because on one hand, it feels like a Disney Channel film, and they have this adult humor as well, and then there's like there's the type of humor it's for like 13 year olds but it's like they're like also at that age getting <laughs> phasing out of disney channel so it's like i don't know who the movie's supposed to be for and then there's also like the callbacks to like happy gilmore's ben stiller character and the o'doyle stuff and it's like so that's older fans right so like who who's it for i don't get it i yeah i think this is for people like my mom, who just love Adam Sandler and will watch any movie Adam Sandler is in, and even then, I think. But those then there's like a lot of Disney Channel like, actor kids, like oh, you're so, the the kids those ages that watch those kids on those shows should recognize them. Those aren't for your parents either. So, who's gonna get excited when they see them? I don't know. Maybe it's like like Kelly oh, Berglund from Lab Rats, like, paying list from Jesse. 
yeah, these these are the actors from uh, the shows your kids watch, remember? And then you got Kenan Thompson, the other guy from SNL. Like, oh my god, SNL, Saturday Night Live, I love that show. Just a mesh, a mesh of shit. Yeah, it, 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 like, Sandler has his, like, staple of actors who yeah. all appear in this. Buscemi. But uh, those are older actors Kev- from his Kevin era. James. Yeah, Kevin James, Rob Schneider. All make appearances in this movie. Keenan Thompson is sort of outside of his time on SNL, but it's still like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. SNL's more like that was one of the few acceptable. scenes in the movie that made me he's laugh. From SNL. Actually, the scene where it's like because he, he like Keenan Thompson cop and Kevin James cop like have a bit of a like uncomfortable exchange is like oh you let Hugh begin into my office and that just keeps cutting back to the past every single time Keenan Thompson wa- walks in with him trying to prevent him from going into the office that part made me laugh um although I will say uh during certain I, I didn't do this throughout the whole movie but there were times where I put it on the high speed option on Netflix I already watched it perfectly normal the first time so for this time I just occasionally would like yeah let's speed this part up a little bit and some of the scenes were legitimately funnier on speed. I don't want to call it two times speed because Netflix doesn't have two times speed. But uh, that scene I saw like in full speed and, and that one was, uh, that, that made the scene funnier because just the pacing was better. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that makes sense. I think, there's, yeah, I think there's scenes in this movie where if you just speed it up a little bit, it's like, yeah, the timing's funnier because this movie is trying to be very cartoonish at points. I mean, the, like, there's like weird things this has in common with w- with eight crazy nights like there's a scene of an animal eating shit and there's a scene of someone pissing their pants yeah and there's like, a whole the, town that hates two... a specific character for no reason yeah yeah and then gets and then gets told oh you shouldn't do that and they're like oh we're sorry Oops. yeah they, they learn their lesson pretty quickly oopsie <laughs> you can't can we talk about the ending here a little? Yeah. Like. Yeah. Okay. First, first off, it's worth saying, like, Michael, you got the twist on this right the first time we watched. <laughs> I remember it, right? that. That was funny. I did. I was, I was like ho- trying to like keep it together, like, ooh, and I can't say who the killer is, and you guys kept guessing throughout, and then Mike's like, I think it's this, the 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 mom. I guess at the start, yeah, you, you you're allowed to spoil it. We yeah. spoil uh, it. We're about to say it anyway. Time. Yeah. It's it's the mom. The mom's the not killer. The characters are still. She was alive. going to kill though. She was about. She was about to become a homicidal maniac. Uh, at worst, she kidnapped people. Um, yeah, and and like the ending, she has them like tied up, and then like Hubie saves them because he's a nice guy, and and then all of them are like, oh, actually, I'm like jealous of Hubie. Yeah, I have dyslexia. Oops, I'm dumb. It's just such he he doesn't he said he doesn't have dyslexia. I thought he, he did. Faked having dys- oh. he faked having <laughs> dyslexia <laughs> because he was I stupid. I thought the movie was just saying I'm dyslexic. I'm stupid. Like I thought that actually is what they were saying. I, I thought that's what he that said too. too. <laughs> I was he like, faked okay, dyslexic. So we so another thing another uh, comparison with the two films. We have a character who faked having dyslexia, and we have a character who I believe faked having seizures. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I, yeah, I don't know. It's just like the ending of this movie is kind of like it's just very yeah, anti-bullying, sure, whatever, and it's man. very on the nose anti-bullying. And again, it's the it's the tone of the film. I just don't know who it's for because like that that like of course you should be teaching anti-bullying to all ages, yeah, but it's usually being taught to like younger audiences. It just feels weird. Yeah, I I feel like I'm not the age like, range okay. there, you know. Okay, the 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 adults in this movie in this movie certainly need to to learn like anti bullying, but like I don't know, is that really that big a problem with like adults? <laughs> not that blatant at the is very it, is least. Is it just bullying the autistic community, even though you're making fun of it? It's just a it's just a oh, it ask more questions than solves. I feel like. I don't know what the topic is, what we're supposed to be having a, having a discussion about. The movie just doesn't make that clear. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. But, um, 
I have another discussion, very brief, I think. Um, sure. So I thought the pacing, uh, when the film opened up until the night of Halloween happened, I thought that the pacing was kind of fine, fine decent town building, world building. And then by the time the Halloween night appeared, it felt like kind of like Grown Ups 2 where things just sort of happened. Yeah. Uh, you know, you establish like, oh, the, the, the sheep got eaten at that farm and then other things are being mysterious. And, and Hubie looks at the gravestone like, oh, he didn't die at all this year. Like all these things are being set up and then you don't, that mystery kind of ends and then things just start happening and then happening and then happening and then happening and then, oh, pranks happening and then happening. And then the film ends. Or sorry, and then the the reveal finally comes back of like, oh, the mom, whatever. Just felt kind of like the pacing went away. It, it just felt like Run Ups Two, sort of another Happy Madison film there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say yeah. Run Ups Two is worse than that, worse with it. But oh, I would course, say yeah. that it's like, yeah, it is like. Uh, I definitely see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It was a drag going through most of the film. Like after that point, for me, like yeah. It definitely feels like we're just cutting back and forth between stuff at that point where I'd agree there's like a little bit of setup at the start of the movie. I'm, I, I feel like most of it's kind of a drag, but it is like there's definitely more of an argument for for it there. Uh, we could talk about the cast because there is like a, a weirdly big cast on this. Very weird. Uh, I wanna... I have, man, I already have something to say too. <laughs> oh shit, keep going though. Sandler Sandler plays Hubie with it, it's it's the classic like oh I, I'm kind of doing a voice thing watch me Adam Sandler I'm kind of doing a voice but not really like Whitey I think is like a voice Whitey and his sister are both Sandler doing a full on voice but then sometimes he'll just do this thing where he like kind of talks out of the side of his mouth and it's like, yeah, that's that's the whole character. That's and I like I would rather just hear Adam Sandler's voice at that point. Right. I don't know. What did you guys think of Sandler in this movie? Um, I mean, I think he's probably the best part of it, and that's you know not a great thing. I know I, I did enjoy Huel. I did enjoy seeing good old Huel. <laughs> another yet another Breaking Bad uh car- cast member appearing on a Hall of Victories movie. I think we've gotten like Walter Hank and uh, Huel. Now we have Huel. Finally. I think we've had Hector, too, in something, didn't we? Maybe, maybe not. I don't remember. I, I think we had Hector. Yeah, Adam Sandler really was kind of the best part, like you said. Like, it, it was a kind of a, just a boring film at, at the end of the day. Like, there's nothing groundbreaking about it. Uh, and Adam Sandler's entertaining, sure. The voice Shaquille like, O'Neal's got, um, yeah. kind of interesting. I, yeah. Honestly, I might I if if I had to pick someone who is like the best in this movie, I might go with uh uh Steve Buscemi. Oh, you know I what? Kinda, he, he was not, fine. Yeah. I, thought, I thought his character was He always gets funny. 110% honestly, for shit projects. He's he's great. Yeah. Honestly, like, I think this is like one of the least obnoxious characters yeah. Rob Schneider has played in any movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, he, he barely does anything until, like, the third act. He pissed himself, but that was about it. That really he, he, he did piss himself. He did piss himself. <laughs> that wasn't scripted, um, by the way. He just did that. Uh, <laughs> we, you can hear it faintly in, in the clip when it's played in the movie, like, the director going, Rob, again. <laughs> they did a, you a gotta few takes. put the piss yeah, in keep changing the his pants every time. It's funny. It's, it's funny. Kevin James's character might be like the one mid ground character. Cause I was talking about like either everyone hates Hubie or they love him. Kevin James is like the one character who's like, Hubie, I'm not I'm not gonna like torment you, I'm not gonna prank you, but please go away. Can please we talk about his alone. character real quick? And like his dynamic with the 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 mom in the film and like yeah. How how their relationship wasn't really explained until, like, you look in the yearbooks, and even then you're like, oh, is that that character? Oh, interesting. And then by the end of the film, it's like, oh, right, he was the other dad. That's that's right. <laughs> I, I, 
I did think it was kind of funny in the final scene where he's standing, like, right there and his own kids are calling Hubie dad. He's a big part of the family and in, in, when you think about, it, like, the general movie, right? And, uh, just, he's just, they don't really bring up that dynamic too much. They don't see, you at least have the mom and that guy interact a couple of times in the first act of the film, right? But no, they don't, they don't interact until the end of the film. They're your your ex husband and wife. You have three kids together. Come on, something. Julie Bowen is the uh, the, the the love interest who's like kind of out of Sandler's league, but like nope, uh, she she's had a crush on him since first grade. You know what? I will say Julie Bowen was hilarious during the times where it's like she's in love with him, but it's like for shit that like there's no reason to say these things to QB <laughs> like when um uh like at the dance uh what was it like she's just complimenting how hot he is he or something and things. she just goes right up to his face or something he's like <laughs> but she's like she's so quirky and like even at the end of the film where he's like saying the stuff on the tv she like with her kids around her at the in the living room she just goes up to the tv and starts making out with this tv screen she's great i love julie I, I I will say of all like it's a trope in Sandler movies yeah. for him to just like always get with the hot girl no matter what but like in this instance it they they play it as a joke they so play it, they play it, it as like she's normal but she's one. also a bit quirky and weird as much as the character Hubie so I'm honestly fine with this ship you know what she's funny she's good yeah she uh, uh, uh she's of course famous for playing the mom on uh modern family, modern family. Yeah. I was thinking about that show recently. That's I like had to Google her show. last night because like, I was like, "Who do I have? Where have I seen her from?" She's like a, a lot of like other things. Modern Family is such a weird show because it's like, it's not beloved, it's not hated, it's barely even remembered. Like people remember it existed, but like, name anything that happened in that show. But it ran for like ten seasons. Another thing, another Happy Madison comparison. She was in Happy Madison, and they bring back Ben Stiller's character from uh, Happy Madison. Uh, so we not only have Happy Gilmore, Happy Gilmore, sorry, Happy Gilmore. She was in that. So you have two Adam Sandlers in this universe and two Julie Bowens, if you think about it. <laughs> and they and both of them ended up together in both in both places in this universe. That's crazy. Have, have have you seen the the video on the Sandler verse? <laughs> no, no, I have. Didn't know there was one. Oh, uh, I gotta send that to you guys. Someone someone just, like, goes through, like, all of the Adam Sandler movies and, like, how they connect to each other. And they don't even... This was, like, before Hubie Halloween, even. So, like... Hubie Halloween is clearly part of the Sandler. You need an update to that of, video. Like, those <laughs> yeah. connections. I, he, I think he did make an update recently. I don't know if... I don't... I don't... I didn't watch the update. Uh, um, I, I guess, uh... You got... Noah Schnapp of Stranger Things fame. Mm -hmm. He is inoffensive, but very boring character as a whole. Uh, there's... Uh, You've got Adam Sandler's two daughters. Yeah. Yep, they're in this. Uh, his wife's in it, too. His wife is a major character in Eight Crazy Nights. I mean, Shaquille O'Neal, I mentioned briefly, he has a scene near the end. He sounds like a girl, and his wife sounds like a boy. Yeah. That's the joke. He has seen the video of Adam Sandler talking about trying to see Shaq's penis. Okay, so eight crazy nights, fellas. Uh... Ben, ben Stiller's <laughs> daughter was eight also crazy in this. Nights. Ray Liotta is in this movie, playing one of the guys who just bullies Hubie for no reason. Wasn't this his last role or one of his last roles? Well, he he was in Cocaine Bear. Oh. Yeah, I guess that's all I've got to say in terms of casting. A lot of Disney Channel people and like, I don't, they, they, they like, I don't, I mean, honest to God, there are people in this that I hated, but I don't even hate it because of them. I think, I, I think this is one of the parts, you, like Matt said, was kind of funny, so I, I apologize in advance. I like Maya Rudolph. I hated her in this. I didn't like Tim Meadows either. I just thought they were obnoxious. Uh, like, I, yeah, I didn't, I no, didn't laugh they, at they them. they kind of. They have, like, one joke I was, like, okay with. Like, I thought it was funny that, like, she just did not want to have sex with she her She was husband. repulsed by him. <laughs> but otherwise, it's, like, 
No, these two characters were not funny. He didn't see the guy in B movie? Ray Luetta. Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah no, Ray Luetta. Ray, oh, is in B oh movie. Ray Liotta Private Select. Liotta. Yeah. Yeah, Ray Liotta Private Select. He has his own honey. He plays himself in the movie. Apparently, in an earlier draft of the script, Ray Liotta was like a running gag. But then, like, in the final version, the only thing is, like, he has his own honey brand. <laughs> this is from the director of Little Nicky, Sandler's best film. <laughs> It'll be interesting jumping over to this next one, because I do feel like with a lot of the live-action films, you're going to get the usual suspects. Well, Fake Crazy Nights, you have to get someone completely different, because it's an animated project. And I've uh, followed Seth Curiously ever since then, and I, I, I have come to appreciate that man. I will say with fake uh eight crazy between eight crazy nights and Hubie Halloween, um Hubie Halloween probably seems like the one that was more fun for Sandler to make because it was just another reunion with his friends and he got his family on board. Not quite a vacation like Grown Ups was, but still and this like one you're just locked in the studio, speaking into a microphone. Still running around this like neat set they built. I'm sure people. I mean Sandler. That's what I will say about Sandler films. I. I don't like them, but if I was, like, an actor in Hollywood and, like, I got contacted to be in one, I would fucking do it because it just seems like they have... It seems like they are having fun making them. That's the one thing yeah, I'll give Sandler Yeah, I mean, he, he... He gets, like, big actors all the time. He's got Ray Liotta in this one. Yeah, he's, so like... like yeah, yeah, he... He gets, like, major actors because it seems like his films are fun to make. He has a reputation of Hollywood sweetheart. Like, people... There's been, you know, like, he's been around for a long time without, like, the biggest controversy he's been involved in is people don't like his movies. And, uh, and yeah, people just keep, like, people who appeared in his stuff in the 90s still appear in his stuff. Like, people, it just seems like everybody likes Adam. So where, even though the movies all always get, like, horrible reception, they're just like, nah, we're gonna, this, this is Adam, we're gonna be in Adam's movie. It always seems like a good time at the very least. It always seems like that, like, I I do not, I, I think that they are, Adam Sandler is someone who's at the at this point aware of the reception a lot of this stuff has. I mean, he's been pretty open about it in the past. But I, to this date, believe that Adam genuinely likes what he makes. Um, I, I, I am convinced that he enjoys his own work. And that's uh, that's more than you can say about a lot of comedians who make movies. So I, I've got respect for Adam. I do agree most of his movies are pretty bad, but uh, but my God, is he a talented guy? He doesn't have to be that way. But I mean, fuck, if he's if he's if he's enjoying himself, let him at it. I know we were gonna move on to Eight Crazy Nights. I just I just remembered one other th uh, thing about Hubie Halloween. Uh, very minor, but I remember I just remember the scene of Ray Liotta's character flirting with China Ann McLean's character. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that too. That ex it, it came out of nowhere and it didn't lead anywhere either. It wasn't set up. It just kind of happened and left. In terms of Sandler Halloween movies, like, Hotel Transylvania is infinitely better oh, yeah. than this. I don't know why you would watch this and not Hotel Transylvania. I haven't but, seen like, Hotel Transylvania. You've never seen it? No. It's... Huh. It's better than it has any right to be, honestly. <laughs> I've heard it's good things decent. about it. It's decent. It has a lot of the same cast as this, yeah. actually. Steve Buscemi plays a werewolf in that, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so It's just him secretly trying to come out as a furry. That's my furry joke for the year. Yeah. yeah. Whitey is Sandler trying to come out as a furry. <laughs> it's, it's not like the most obnoxious Sandler movie or anything. It's like fine yeah but i there's also like no reason to watch it mm -hmm. like even even some of sandler's worst films it's like ah, at least i can like get mad and shake my fist at this Hubie like Halloween this is so have that. it's so passable it's so innocent yeah like there we just watched yeah. eight crazy nights and there were some things that actually pissed me off every time i watch it even uh yeah let's let's yeah. talk about eight crazy nights all right, Eight Crazy Nights is a film released in uh, 2002, uh, very, like, only one year before, I was looking things up, things up just a year before his dad passed, his dad does a singing role in this movie, 
Um, he, so that's interesting. It was released in 2000, November 27th, 2002, directed by Seth Kearsley, who's gone off to do a lot of behind the scenes on this movie. He share, he shares so much of like the work he's done on YouTube going into it. I, I've actually watched up on it a good bit. I follow him on Twitter. He's a neat guy. I like him. Uh, responded pretty good, had, like, a pretty good sense of humor about, like, the nostalgia critic on Eight Crazy Nights and all of that, so good good sport all around about it. And the movie follows a man named Davy Stone, who basically is just animated Adam Sandler. He's a bit more of an asshole, um, for sure, but he looks like, like, they didn't, like, design-wise, he looks like Sandler, um, who is a very troubled man who hates the holidays, but also just hates life in general, has a drinking issue. Um, and after a his most recent uh, public display of, a, of, of affection, he gets himself arrested and with the threat of going to prison for 10 years when a kind old man, also voiced by Sandler Whitey, comes in to save the day, saying that if he volunteers at, like, you know, if he does some volunteer referee work, as, like, a basketball coach, uh, he could, like, oh, he's seen so many people come in and do that volunteer work, and it turns their life around, and they become better people. A lot of the kids playing there, it puts them on the right path, so the idea is if Whitey can get him to do that and have him stay out of trouble, then Sandler can avoid the prison time, um, and through this, uh, Whitey also wants to win this award that acknowledges great people in the community, uh, because he spent basically dedicated his entire life trying to be kind to these people and get them to acknowledge him, but very few people do. Uh, and yeah, from there, it's just you're waiting to see if uh, Davey can confront his past and finally move on from it, and if the town will ever appreciate Whitey for the kind soul he is. Uh, I will, we'll start with Zach just again being the guest. Zach, how do you, what do you think about Eight Crazy Nights as a whole? As a whole, it's rewatchable. I feel like compared to Hubie Halloween, definitely rewatchable. Uh, even if you dislike some scenes, like there's just there's a lot of material to meme on, and it's been memed on just like Shark Tale. Uh, again, would have been so much better of a comparison, Matt. You really dropped the ball with this one, but um, no, it's a it's a it was a fun time watching it again for like the fiftieth time. Uh, <laughs> it is the second time me and you specifically watched it together. Are you sure second and not third or fifth? Are you sure did second? We, did we watch it together? I know we. I like, don't we did know. It feels like we. It feels maybe like we, we did. I, I we definitely watched clips of it. I wonder if we had, maybe we did sit down and watch the whole movie together before. I don't remember, but we definitely did it for Mackle and Zatch, and I'll just now for this. I think just to like compare it to Hubie Halloween a little, little eight crazy nights swings so much harder mm. than Hubie Halloween does. So when it hits, it hits better than Hubie Halloween. But when it misses, it misses so much harder than Hubie <laughs> Halloween does. Like, yeah. Ab- absolutely a case of, like, higher highs, lower lows. It's a very big, know? like, equivalent exchange sort of moment. Like, a good Phil Mel Alchemist moment right there. Uh, yeah. Wild. Like, like the bad stuff in this movie is so much worse than the shit in Hubie Halloween. Yeah. But the good stuff is also a lot better, I think. The mor- the moral's at least a lot better than Hubie Halloween. Like, that ending we talked about before, like, whose audience was that for in this one? At least, at least the bullying thing was, like, a lot more subtle and handled better. I guess it's mainly just it's mainly just Davy being a bully. There is that porta potty scene, but I, I remember there being a lot more than that. Really, it's like the porta potty scene, and then the examples of people bullying him in the song at the end. Um, they're not, this movie isn't as relentless towards Whitey as I remember yeah. it being, but it's more so just in terms of screen time. Like when it when the movie is being mean to Whitey, it's being really fucking mean to Whitey. You also have to remember, too, like, the main character is the bigger character that gets the redemption, and, like, that whole thing about their arc is, like, oh, they lost their parents and they're going through that grief, and Hubie Halloween is just these bullies for no reason bullying this character, and then afterwards they're like, oh, I guess we're gonna change. There, There's no connect, there's nothing that connects you to these guys to m- make you, like, understand why they bullied. With with Davey, there's, there's something there, as bad as this film is, there's something there, at least. It's but I, I feel like the the only person who is being mean to Whitey 
for for like most of the runtime is Davy. Davy is such a piece of shit. They go so overboard in making him like a a, a shitty, unlikable character. And I I get it to some degree. You want this character to be a little shitty, a little unlikable, but like they blow straight past that and make him like the worst human being. And then and then he has to have a redemption arc by the end. It's it's a yeah. very weird topic. Like I I definitely agree with you. I'm also like, oh yeah, he lost his par- he lost both of his parents <laughs> at twelve, and like went through like I'm assuming decades of. I think they could have toned it down a little bit, but I do think that like um I, I oh man, there's a great there's a quote from a review of the movie that Seth Kearsley mentions in his one of his like in his video on Eight Crazy Nights, which I would recommend watching even like. It's a good video, but he mentions, like, because, like, he, you know, he talks about, like, yeah, people compliment the animation, and I should be, I am flattered by that, but, I mean, like, I want people to like the whole movie, like that, and he said, like, he said one of his favorite quotes um, from a review, like, one of the only people who gave a positive review of the movie is saying it's a, is, like, the film, like, how nasty the film gets, both of how gross it is and how mean-spirited the characters are, it's, like, kind of finding the beauty in something terrible that's like that's kind of the idea of the movie that's why they went so extreme with that and i hear where he's coming from with that i do think it's too much the it, the movie should still be enjoyable to watch throughout it should like you can have a mean-spirited character who goes for a redemption arc without making it like this infuriating this is kind of a weird matchup because it we've done animated movie versus live action movie before we had uh, uh mars needs moms versus john carter before but mars needs moms like we, we were kind of shitting on the animation the animation in this movie is really good it's very it good did they get the team that did iron giant and osmosis jones because I, I feel so. I'm getting those big vibes from that the style is exactly like it I think there were there was some crossover of that. I I might be wrong about that, but I I think so. Yeah, like and and not only did they get that studio, but like that studio cared for this product a lot, and you can tell from even the chasing in the beginning of the film. Like, there's a lot of like the colors and everything, the outlines. Everything was just very well done, and and the framing. There was a lot of frames for all the animation. All all the animation. I mean, like the body um uh, autonomy uh, was was definitely um. What's it researched well for this? Yeah, it, it's very, very well done. I mean, like, Did I, I think economy. Seth... I meant anatomy. Anatomy. Yeah. <laughs> I just not realized. I, I think that Seth Kearsley is a good illustrator. Um, I think he's a. I, I you know, animation wise, I can't like you can't say like, oh, he's responsible for all the animation. That's like a big team. But he directed it well, and he did like. He shared a lot of behind-the-scenes, like, drawings that he did of, like, trying to design the characters. Like, he clearly has that down. I do think, unfortunately, a lot of his artwork gets associated with this Family Guy style because those are the projects he got picked up for, including Family Guy. He has been a writer and storyboard artist for Family Guy. Um, And even Eight Crazy Nights, to an extent, has a little bit of that Family Guy look to it, I feel. Um... Oh, it looks nicer than Family Guy, but I, I'd say, like, just some of the way, like, the eyelids and whatnot, and just some of the expressions in general. <laughs> Very Family Guy-esque, maybe, but he's still Maybe the a... mouths you're thinking of? Maybe? I can maybe. see with the mouths. It, it, it's not, like, it's not entirely like Family Guy. It's just a... I don't know. I, I, I think it also has something to do with the sense of humor. Um, but it's also, like, uh, I, th- I think, like, he has another... He had, like, another show... Um, I forget what it was called. It was about a bunch of cats. Um, and it was like ABC family trying to do oh. an edgy adult comedy. Fuck, like the, the family guy rip off cats show. Yeah, I mean, there was I, even I know, an Eight Crazy what, Nights poster for it. Like that meme that one of I them I know was. what you're talking about. I don't remember the name of the show. This was his only movie directing role, I believe, and it's kind of funny because in the behind the scenes video, he goes over how, you know, like he wanted to do something in live action after Eight Crazy Nights. Slacker uh, Cat? Yes. Um, yeah. He only directed two episodes, apparently. 
he was he was a very he was he was involved in like designing all the characters though for it like he was heavily involved in the pre-production of the show the movie because he talked about this is like after eight crazy nights a bunch of doors opened for him um which maybe you wouldn't think would happen with how poorly received the movie was but no like there was opportunities coming especially if like you know animation was praised for this and he said he wanted to do live action and he said like that opportunity never came and he also kind of watched slowly every single one of those doors close so he kind of screwed himself uh but he still had work since then like i said he's even like worked on major shows like family guy um you know say whatever you want about that show that's a that's a good job i've i've, re- I've done my research <laughs> <laughs> the, this movie also like something that sets it apart from hubie halloween this is a musical there's a lot of <laughs> musical numbers in this yes and iconic ones it's it's kind of a mixed bag. I think some <laughs> of them are good and some of them are kind of like, oof, really? Sorry to cut you off. Where are your thoughts on Technical Foul? We think it's a <sighs> banger. Mike and I, we love Technical Foul. I, I, I think it works as like an ironic banger as like, uh, oh, haha, ha, it's like kind of funny that, like, it's not like a totally bad song, but the, the voice that S- Sandler is singing it in is like, wow. I don't know. I, 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 Mike, I think we need like to give Mad Refresher a little bit. So, I think we should like do a little, I think we should do a little ditty, you and me, you and me. A little, little snippet from the song. What do you think? Technical foul. Yeah. Can I walk around with my morning erection? I don't know the rest of the lyrics to that, so I'm just gonna uh, add. If it. you um, want an automatic I said, Stop playing with my PlayStation. That's what he said. I'm sure he said that. Yeah. So I you like it now, right, see Matt? It anyways. Oh, see, he's singing along. He loves it. He loves it. Can I give like a little brief rundown of the soundtrack? I'll make it quick. Yeah. Sure. I think Davy's song is really catchy. And I think it's a good introduction for this character. And I think if he wasn't as big of a piece of shit throughout the movie, like it would be a good song to establish the mindset the character has on the world. Uh, there is um, At the Mall, which I even after watching it again, I don't remember. It's a Whitey song because it's immediately followed by the Patch song, which is more memorable because it has people pissing themselves in it. Uh, it's not a bad song, honestly. It's just, it's very short, but Whitey singing it is the issue. It's more um, memorable because people piss themselves in it. Yes. Like um, 2023. Thank hell you. yeah. Uh, yeah. There was Long Ago, which I think actually might be the like one of the nicest sounding songs in the movie. It's the one where they're driving home. They do throw in a lot of jokes. It's honestly one of the songs though, where I'm okay with Whitey's interruptions in it. Just be, like, in terms we, of we Whitey's... We talked over that one scene that Matt missed with the, the 1-800, uh, like the sex worker right because in the mac that was a good joke i feel like that was a good cut and you talked over that my that was fucked up when we did the mac and zatch on it's like one of the only parts of the movie that made me laugh yeah you shouldn't have done that matt i i did compliment that song because i thought it was funny that he he like sings a, a line about his trailer being on fire and then the song just stops and he's like wait my trailer is on fire yeah I also just like that I, I th- we talked about how much exposition there is at the beginning of the movie, and it's obnoxious. And oh I feel like god, that, be- that fucking judge! I know that fucking judge. <laughs> he was, he's just li- so much exposition. He lives just like for that. Everyone, everyone who walks in, it's like, oh, Whitey, you're seventy years old, and you're going to have to retire after this season of basketball. <laughs> if that was, if those same lines came from a character in Rick and Morty, you would know it's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good comparison. You would not have to be any more obvious than that, but in this movie, with its tone, it, I don't think it was a joke. I think it was just really poorly written. And the thing is, the song long ago, I think, establishes everything really well. You don't, you didn't yeah. need any of that. Uh, it establishes that Davy used to be a nice person. It establishes like the girlfriend that they used to be close when they were younger. It establishes Davy's parents who at this point it's you know there was already a line about them being dead that like that that much acknowledging they're dead is fine and then that followed by the flashback scene later at near the end of the movie that those two scenes would have been enough you didn't need any of the fucking exposition (laughs) explaining it 
Um, you get the picture. It's right in front of you. It's it's very clear. Um, uh, so after that, there is Technical Foul, bang, absolute masterpiece. In all honesty, I think the song is very catchy. It's just, yeah, you're listening to Whitey and Eleanor singing that <laughs> one. <laughs> There's a part where, and I remember like in the Mackle and Zatry did on this too, like we're saying this is like the fucking like third circle of hell or something where it's just all three of them <laughs> singing at once. Dude, it is such, it has such material to be used as a meme. Like, if you just call anything a technical foul. You just post that clip for any reply to something you don't like. It's so funny. Uh, technical it's foul. Icon- it really is iconic. The Intervention song is very very catchy, but it's very obnoxious. Which one That it's that? like, it's the product placement song. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it's like, a, it's not, it's not even that bad of a song. And it has the, like, part at the end where it's like Sandler's it's actual setup. parents singing. That's yeah, the setup. It, it's like a big, it's supposed to be a big emotionally climactic moment for his character. And it's done through the advertising in the movie, you know, it's like ridiculous. If you want to be obnoxious about it, be fucking obnoxious about it, but don't like throw it off to the side like the fucking Sonic movies do with Olive Garden. Like, yeah, yeah you're you're being obnoxious, but at least it's not getting in the way of the like story. Like it's in and it's out, you know. Yeah, this was the first time I like sat down and watched the whole movie. But, like, when I was younger, I watched the Nostalgia Critic review of this movie, and and the second all of, like, the the storm mascots come to life and start singing to Davy, I'm like, God, fuck this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's like, I can't defend that at all, because it's like, again, I understand product placement is sometimes, it's a necessary evil to get fund in. But don't forget to sponsor too, or no, we will not bow to any <laughs> don't corporation. For, don't forget too, like not only did they do this at a weird time, but like they already did this in the film earlier. They did with all the product placement. They already did what they needed to earlier. They didn't need to bring back the product placements to sing this song. We already got that with Whitey earlier in the film. Like, oh, here's this store. Here's this store. It's a anno- it's annoying. Went on too long. Sure. But at least that ended. We didn't need to bring it back, like, an hour later. They're trying to act like fucking Sandler. Davy has, like, this Quasimodo and the Gargoyles bond with these characters, too. They don't interact once. So, like, when he goes in the store, it's like, it's like, oh, we know you, Davy. We're having a, we're what, having a what chat What if with like you he, What if, like, in his childhood, he was known to, like, go to these stores all the time, and he talks about them, like, even if he's a jerk to white, he's at least saying, yeah, I, I love going to that store or whatever. It's like, it sure would have been annoying, but, like, I don't know, something, I guess? I think it would be perfectly acceptable, too, if they weren't... And I, mean, like, I think that'd be a, like, fine idea if they weren't... I, like, if... And I understand this is a big if, if they weren't... Yeah. Uh, if they weren't real, like, products. Oh, real product placements, like fake ones. Yeah, that would have been fake, too. Yeah, if they were fake ones, that would be If they were parody ones, fun. that would have been funny, too. Imagine all the potential that you would have with all those product placements being, like, just parodies of them. Would have been hilarious. Don't you guys want to go to Radio Shack after this? <laughs> yeah, I love Radio Shack where I can get my wires and my wires. What else do they sell there at Radio Shack? I forget. It's been like actual years. Uh, they don't sell anything at Radio Shack anymore. <laughs> it's defunct. What do you mean? They're, they're out of business. They don't sell shit. What? Bum bitty. I, I am bummed, Mike. You're right. Radio Shack uh, is dead. Bum Bitty is uh, very... Also iconic. Very catchy, I'll say that. Uh, you know what? You know what? I, I want to say this. I have to say it. I have to say it. When we rewatched the movie, and I was like, wait for it, wait for it, the Bum Bitty part took a little too long to come in. The, the Before that, it was just okay. It was the Bum Bitty part that was really the only good part of the song. Don't at me. I, I, I tell you, man, if I were a rich man <laughs> With a all day or long, bitty bitty bum. Bum bitty bitty bitty, bitty, bitty bum. bum. I wonder if that guy ever wiped his ass with the it's wrong with his bone. Head. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only good part of the song. Before that, it's just like, it's whatever. Whatever, you know? It's okay. Passable. The Hanukkah song for the credits is just like a, another version of the. I think it's the third version of the Hanukkah song Sandler did, and I, I it makes perfect sense to end the movie with that. Like that's probably Sandler's most popular song. All right, all right, Zach, 
Zach, I gotta put you on the hot seat for a second. I love hot seats, especially when you're on that massage chair and like has like the warmer on your butt, and you're like, oh my god, this is the best massage ever. How do you spell Hanukkah? Uh, it's totally not me googling right now. Hold on, hold on. Actually, wait, I think I no, I, I can do this off the top of my head. Hold on, are you saying with an H first of all? <laughs> that I'm asking you. H A N N U K A H. That's what an H. Uh. Other than that, I think you put a C before that, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I think this movie spells it with a C. No, like, yeah, no there's no C so in Hanukkah. No C. Absolutely. I will put the, my foot down on that. There is definitely not a C in Hanukkah. If there is, smite me, but I do not think there is. Let me Google. Well, that's what. That's just what the songs are labeled with. Like, the songs well, definitely have... There's definitely start, two... Yeah, there's two Ks. The Fuck you, Matt. Songs Anti-Semitic listed. piece of shit. But some 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 Jews put a C at the beginning before the age. Yeah, at the beginning, yeah. I thought you meant like a C in like after Hanu or something. Okay, never mind. You're not anti-Semitic anymore. When I said that that one time, I didn't mean it. <laughs> All right, uh, that's great. Anyways, I hate the Jewish race. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> should we talk about the cast of this movie? Like, it's it's a lot of the same people. Okay, no, well, honestly, no, because, like, when the credits rolled, there was, like, six, seven names. Like, they didn't really show a lot of people. I, I, I feel like that's all that there was for this film, just a few people, not even less than a dozen. So, Clint Howard, we, we've de- last episode we declared Clint Howard the king of hollow victories. I think Sandler and Schneider are, like, the runners up for the crown at this point. Yeah. Because they've both had, they've both had two starring roles and two cameo roles. What was the other uh, Sandler cameo role? Cam- Sandler was in both of the, the Schneider. Was he in The Animal? Yeah, he was, he was in The Animal and in The Hot Chick. Oh, was he at the end of The yeah. Animal? But he, in, in The Animal, he plays... The same character that, like, Rob Schneider plays in a bunch of his movies, including, uh, starting in The Water Boy, where he's just like, you can do it! Yeah. Like, they just that swapped that role, it's just Adam Sandler and doing that. that, that and, that yeah, thing. and then Sandler did it for, for Schneider's movie. And then also the character he played in The Hot Chick was originally Schneider's character on SNL. The dude who's just like, oh, yeah, and you can, like, hide your weed in here. So... So both of them have had a starring role and both of them have had a cameo role. So each, both of them have four movies on Hollow Victories so far, which puts them right below Clint Howard. Clint Howard has had five. Yeah, I, I do think Clint Howard should still be the king, although I would say at this point Sandler and Schneider, uh, Schneider have had like more screen time than him for sure. Probably. But... But I, I just think appearing five, I, going off of appearances, I, I would like it to be Clint Howard still, just personally. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, <laughs> we, we should, he he's in Little Nicky. We could watch Little Nicky for. I gotta find something to pair that up with. I love. That's Little a hard Nikki. one. That's a hard one. It's a Little Nicky is fucking terrible. But I'm I haven't like seen it. For, so I remember when I was younger and I watched. And I, lo- I loved it. it. I am. I am enamored with that film. I'm like, this. F- <laughs> Little Nicky is my Eight Crazy Nights. You gotta understand. <laughs> what what Eight Crazy Nights is to you two, Little Nicky is to me. The, the, guy with the, the guy with the booby head. I bet you love that scene. When, when yes. what's it, Kevin Nielsen has boobs on his head. Yeah, the guy with joke. tits on his head. Yeah. And and Rodney Dangerfield is Lucifer. Oh my god, I forgot Rodney Dangerfield was in that film. <laughs> oh my god. That, oh. that and the movie had Quentin Tarantino and Rod, Rodney Dangerfield in the same film. That is wild. <laughs> that is Quentin crazy. Tarantino makes a cameo for no re- Dude, wild that is such Tarantino a hard film to compare cameo. it with. Like the more I think about it, like how do you compare little <laughs> Nicky to it? it that was the thing was all over the place. <laughs> Too much to talk about with that one. I want to watch... Man, uh, we're getting uh, off topic, though. I want to watch the animated movie that Rodney Dangerfield is in where he's like the dog and it's Christmas. <laughs> now we're getting really off topic. R- Rover Dangerfield. Yes. Yeah. What's another celebrity animal movie? Comedian uh, animal movie. I'm sure we could find one. Do you have anything else to say about Eight Crazy Nights? Some of the cast, I mean, like, I would say, like, Sandler, like, we actually haven't... 
the character Davey is insufferable, but I think his performance is fine. I think he does good in the songs. I think he's good at being an asshole. I, like I, I think oh, we, that we it's, did talk about his quick transition at the end of that one, uh, technical foul, like from him becoming an asshole to him being like, oh yeah, now he's like understanding, like you know, these guys uh, just need to get uh, need to come some slack a bit. You know, they're cool now. Yeah, no, that's like, and then goes right back to that right after. The I scene think for the most part, the movie has fine pacing, but yeah, him growing to like Whitey happens within seconds, and then growing to hate him again. To I be want... fair, more understandable because why he says something, but well, also like he says something. He, I would say that like his reaction is too extreme, like it makes him way too fucking unlikable. But I would say that or that being where the falling out happens at least works, just because yeah. He's, like, retelling the story of when his parents die. He's like, please stop bringing yeah, and, that up. That's and Davey asks him to stop multiple times before he gets angry. It's just when he gets angry, he he goes, like, fucking nuclear. <laughs> I, if the, in the flashback, Whitey does the, like, Mr. Roboto dance. And yeah. I thought you were joking when you were like, <laughs> yeah. oh, Whitey does that right before Davey finds out his parents. He does it. a robot. He does the Mr. Robotnik dance. Be- Robotnik. Robot dance when, like, right before he finds out his parents die. And Matt's like, no, 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 that's And that actually ha- I thought you guys were joking, but no, that. <laughs> it literally Whitey happened right does after. Mr. Roboto right before Davey finds out his parents are He dead. does Mr. Roboto. The cops come in. He's like, Davey, we have this letter for you. Uh, so, yeah. You're you're an orphan, bro. He, he does it before and after. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Right after. What do you mean, right after? <laughs> it would just be really. No, funny he does if not. He I don't remember that. <laughs> it'd be, it'd be you're really an funny. Orphan. If he did. Time to do the robot dance. <laughs> oh man. Ugh. That would have been terrible. First of all. <laughs> what do you think of Adam Sandler's whiny voice? It's good. Yeah. It's no, not, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's a pretty horrible you know, voice. Like, I, I've grown you know. ironic like for it, but it's horrible. Eleanor, I'll at least say it does not sound like him. So it's a good, it's a Eleanor good voice. Eleanor just reminds me of, no, no, no. Eleanor just reminded me of Jill from Dragon Jill. That's just, I think that's just the voice. I, okay, that's fair. I, it does, it, it I, I was kind of surprised to learn that it was Sandler. I, I mean, listen, when you, when you, that Adam Sandler verse video you talked about I'm, I'm sure eight crazy nights and jack and jill are connected in that way you know whitey and 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 uh uh eleanor being jack and jill i'm sure that's a theory out there jack and jill's another one i feel like we should do an episode on <laughs> is Rob i think it's Schneider- over i think it's over talked about i think it's not even worth doing maybe maybe that's my opinion i feel like it's been talked about to the end of the moon yeah but at the same time this show is about like doing like pretty infamous what more ones. Can you like, say it, like it's about like who would want to listen to that discussion again like i don't know that's just me that's just me being critical it's it's i mean fair point i mean we've done star yeah. wars episode one though so i mean yeah now now the family yeah. guy star wars movies maybe that could be a fun one rob schneider in this movie is mm. this the, is that the most racist character in any of the things we've talked <laughs> no, about yet no he's done he's no, on the asian no, characters I mean, in live action i'm talking about just like, like on in, the uh, show oh in this show, i don't know what have you done uh, has has rob schneider done a more offensive character on our show or has there been a more offensive character on our show yeah i'm saying is the chinese waiter in this movie the most racist character on the show so far that's the question <sighs> Probably. Hold on, let me look at what we've got. I mean, if you've ever, week. if you ever do, uh, I may now pronounce you Chuck and Larry, or whatever the movie was called. I think that's what it was. Like he's the officiator who's he plays an Asian priest, like with the makeup and everything and the accent, which I feel like is even worse than this. If you ever do that, then yeah, I'll take the cake. I, I, I know in bedtime stories he plays like a Native American and it's it's kind of like not a good depiction Yikes. of a Native American. It's also a kid's uh, movie. Rob Schneider as as the Asian cook might be the most offensive character we've seen Jar Jar's in any up of there. these movies. I mean, sure, but like... It's a lot more deliberate in uh, Eight Crazy Nights, though. No, yeah, no, he is, like, a specific race in this that Rob Schneider is not. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I think it's probably the worst, because it's, like, really exaggerated, too. Like, they were... It, that is, like, the joke how much it's being played up. 
And what? Hold on. What was up with that scene when like the 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 mayor tells a joke at the banquet and everyone just like starts going wild at how funny it is? They are all and then he slams laughing, his head like, on the so table. hard. He rips his shirt off oh, and wait, slams no, his head on the table. What was up with like the the movie just like descends into madness? That's for, like, that's just most Adam Sandler films. They just do ridiculous, over the top reactions, really, for their characters. Even like, remember when the cowboy appeared? <laughs> that same scene, just shooting guns into yeah, the into yeah. the ceiling. Very random. Kind of came out of nowhere. There's a cowboy. Mike's was like, "There's a cowboy there." <laughs> just there, there. There was like the homeless guy too that like talks to. He the was there in that other and... scene though. Don't forget. Yeah, I guess just like a few other ca- people who appeared in the. Uh movie these are just like little ones like they're not big characters but just kind of like fun little side notes the in the product placement song the two toy soldiers were voiced by uh cole sprouse and dylan sprouse that's what and cody yeah i that that checks out because they they were in the other film with them yeah yeah they collectively played the kid in big daddy yeah uh kevin farley chris farley's brother voiced the panda express did Eight Crazy Nights come out before Sweet Life, or? Uh, I'm sure. I think so. Think, probably right around this, the time, like 2002. 2002, that would have been, like, uh, at least a little before Sweet Life. Mm-hmm. 2005. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was like, three years before Sweet Life. I, I've mentioned several times that uh, both of Sandler's parents voiced themselves in the song. Um, I think there's one scene where they just talked to. Uh... There was, uh, and then finally the Victoria's Secrets, uh, was Jaina Sandler, who's apparently just Sandler's cousin, so keeping it in the family. That's something that Sandler always seems to do with a family mm. member. I, his love interest in this movie was his, like, actual wife. Yes. First and only something time. worth mentioning. I know, the one where she doesn't, like, They can, they can never be seen do. together side by side as a married couple on, on <laughs> camera, live action. It can never happen. Um, she, she, she's not hot enough to play Sandler's wife. Damn. She's, she's listening right now, Matt. Yeah. Sandler (laughs) fucking hates you now, Matt. That, that, that was a joke. That's not funny, That was, that was a joke at the, the expense of the fact that Sandler always casts, like, the hottest actress to play his wife in every movie. He does do that. Oh, God. So, so what do you, what do you think about... Adam Sandler's wife then, like, what's so unattractive about her, Matt? I don't know. I I am looking at her now for the first <laughs> time. First impressions. She, she's 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 honestly uh, she's she's pretty good looking. Oh um, yeah, now you say that. Now you say that when you're on the spot. But before you were like, she's fucking ugly, bro. She's ugh. Adam Sandler cast like the hot <laughs> that was... woman in his movies, and his wife is just I... not it, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> That was Nuh-uh. a joke at Sandler's. That was absolutely a joke at Adam Sandler's expense. <laughs> That's really fucked up, Mike. And Matt. You don't even you don't even know who you're attacking anymore. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> um so yeah, I, I think that's about it. Like I I don't know. It's a it's a it's a clusterfuck of a movie. There's things about it that are infuriating. I think it's paced pretty well. It's only like if you like exclude the credits, it's only an hour and ten minutes long. Yeah, that, that is one difference I had here where like Hubie Halloween, I'm like, how is this like an hour forty? And to be fair, it's not. Like a lot of that is credits. They, they do have a but, really long credit sequence. And don't forget a lot of the plot is just lost because of like the grown ups two treatment where it's just random shit happens in Hubie Halloween. Uh, whereas this film, it feels very consistent. Yeah, I'm like, oh wow, this one's only an hour fifteen. Which, granted, I think that's more likely to happen with an animated film where they have to like pay for every frame of animation. Like, if this was live action, I'm sure it would have gone on like fifteen more minutes at like least. Like the ad libbing scenes and all that too, with live action stuff compared to animation. But um, also in Eight Crazy Nights, you can you can kind of feel like where Act One, Act Two, and Act Three is. You know, where the where the where the world building is, where the character uh, development is, where the end goal is, you can feel that with Hubie Halloween. It's 
you you have establishing and you have random shit and then it ends. Like the whole plot of like people suddenly disappearing doesn't start until halfway through Hubie Halloween. Which, granted, is consistent with, like, a lot of horror films, but, like... But the mystery starts at, like, at the farm and all that beforehand, and the grave and all that. Yeah. The missing people's the more after aftermath, after the fact thing. But. I predicted that it was gonna be the mom the second she gave him a speech about, like, oh, you gotta, like, start sticking up for yourself. I was just like, that's gonna be the twist, and I was correct. You think you're so cool. I do. I got the fucking persona <laughs> for Villain Reveal 2 really early in that playthrough. Like, I start making jokes about who it's going to be. And I am making jokes at first. And then it's just like, it, that joke running bit runs throughout the entire series up until the point where it's like, oh, fuck, I was right. That one was more of a joke, though. That one wasn't like I genuinely believed it. I was fucking around and I was right. I think you have superpowers, dude. I do. I think I do. I think I predict all endings. You hear that? Pentagon? <laughs> Got him. Pentagon? I don't know. <laughs> is that like, what is that? I'm thinking of like some, I was trying to think of like some secret underground show where they would like snag, snap, snag you and like dissect you and then I'm like, uh, the Pentagon. Are, are, are we on to voting? Can, yeah, can I'm, I'm, I, voting? I knew from the very beginning what to, what to vote for, 100%. All right, Zach, you're you're up first. A crazy nights, landslide, landslide. A crazy nights. It's not boring for most of it. it. It has its problems where it pisses me off, like the scene with the deers shitting, and you they animated that so well with the the asshole expanding and the poopy coming out. <laughs> I didn't need that. I didn't need that animators, but thank you. It is animated uh, really well, and it's one it of those things you don't want. It pisses me off every yeah. time I watch it, but <laughs> it's still way better than Hubie Halloween. Michael, are are you with him? Uh, yeah, I I like. I mean, I I like. I I think I like Eight Crazy Nights now. It took a while because when I when I first saw it, I didn't really like it. I like it. It's not good. Uh, there's too many things working against it for me to call it good. But, I mean, it's it looks so good. The songs are catchy, even though Whitey should not be singing them. Um, <laughs> and um, if you just, I swear, if you just toned a few things down, like tone down the gross-up humor, tone down, ha- to, like, make Davey a little bit more likable. You can still make him a dick, but tone it down a bit because we want to forgive him by the end. I think it would be an all-right movie. Masterpiece, no, but it would be an all-right movie. It's... It, for what it is, it is interesting. <laughs> it's kind of like a yeek for me, where I, there's so much fucking working against it. I know talking about yeek is kind of weird, because we, it's a, not relevant to this channel, but um, it's just one of those things where it's like, God, there's so much that doesn't work here, but the things that make it work make me wish the whole thing was good. I really want this to be a good movie. The the main character in this is almost as bad as Alex yeek. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> Who's Alex Yeek? He's a swell fella who okay. does not care about your dead sister. Oh, that's nice. He sounds like a great guy. <laughs> um, real quick, though, I do want to give another note about Eight Crazy Nights. It's so much more rewatchable than Hubie Halloween. I think I said that earlier on anyway, but it, I, I would watch Eight Crazy Nights again and again. Hubie Halloween, it's like, I rewatched it last night after a while not watching it again. And I was open-minded. And I'm like, again, like, it just, as soon as the Halloween night happens, I'm kind of just hanging around for the rest of the film. Whereas Eight Crazy Nights, like, there's meme material there. There's stuff we can talk about afterwards and during. It's a good time, as bad as the film is. Even the bad shit, I can still scream at my computer screen at, with you guys being like, why the fuck did they animate Deer's pooping? <laughs> why? Hubie Halloween never does that for me. It's just boring. It's why just did they animate it better than the dance at the end of the movie? The dance at the end of the movie, too. Like, ugh. Two FPS. No, expressionless faces. They, anyway. They, it's, yeah. like, so dead. They look so fucking dead. So, and that's... so fucking dumb. <laughs> All right, Matt, what do you All think? Right. Yeah, I mean, I kind of figured you guys were going that way. And here's the thing. I, I agree with you. I think I think Eight Crazy Nights is closer to being 
a good movie, I think you would have to do less to make a Crazy Nights a good movie. At the same time, like, I, I feel like, I feel like it's, like, the better ironic pick. I feel like I would rather, like, rewatch this with you guys and just, like, meme on it more than, like, you be Halloween. But if I'm gonna sit down and watch one of these, like, alone by myself... I would rather sit down and watch Hubie Halloween alone by can I, myself. Can I ask you? Can I ask you what would you get out of it alone, watching Hubie alone? I I mean, very little, but like, I don't know. Like, a, a, at least I wouldn't like hate it as much as I like. I don't. I feel like you should try watching Eight Crazy Nights sometime alone, and then giving your opinion here because I I don't believe you. I really don't. I really don't. Well, I think you know I'll be what? pleasantly it, it, surprised by how boring Hubie Halloween is and how at least entertaining A Crazy Nights is alone. I, I it doesn't matter in this case <laughs> because because we we have a guest on and the guest <laughs> vote counts more than the audience vote. Damn. But the audience is with me on this one. With 43 votes, it's 58% for Hubie Halloween. Wow. That's crazy. I'm did honestly they, Did surprised. they even watch the film? I bet they did. I, I bet they were uh, trying to I, do a spy for eight crazy nights. That's my hot take. Honestly, honestly, I thought people were just gonna pick eight crazy nights because they've seen eight crazy nights and like fucking no one has seen. No Hubie one ever. Halloween. No, no one even knows about Hubie Halloween. I'm, I'm actually very surprised by the vote. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Maybe they've seen eight crazy nights and were like, ugh, that movie's terrible. Hubie yeah, Halloween has to be it better. It's just it's a vote against eight crazy nights. It's just out of spite. It's gotta be. Po possibly. Possibly. But it doesn't matter. The audience... In, if we have a guess, the audience phone really doesn't mean much. Uh, in this case, A Crazy Nights wins. And you know what? I'm perfectly okay with that. The one time it's allowed to win. It did it. Yeah. It, I, did I, it. it finally I don't, did it. I, I think these two are honestly, like... Like, they're very different movies, but they are kind of close in terms of quality in my mind. Like, one of them, I'm like, okay, like, not really that good, not really that bad. The other one, I'm like, some stuff that's pretty good, some stuff that's pretty bad. <laughs> like, they, they both cover a wide, like, one of them covers a wider range than the other, but, like, if you average it all together, they're about equal in my mind. Now, Eight Crazy Nights and Shark Tale... Oh, that'd be a harder. Uh, it's time to talk for another hour and a half. Hell yeah! I I think I'm gonna go with Eight Crazy Nights because I think there's stuff I unironically enjoy about Eight Crazy Nights. Where Shark Tale, I think it's like 100 percent ironic. What about you, Michael? Eight Crazy Nights or or Shark Tale? Uh, ooh. it's a hard one. It is hard to say. I'm leaning towards <laughs> Eight Crazy Nights, but I also just saw it, so. Yeah, like I, I have to rewatch Shark Tale to really know. I need to watch both of them. I might at say least Eight Crazy Nights. I don't know. <laughs> like again, we've talked about everyone's talking about this. Eight Crazy Nights animation right. is is it's nice to look at. It's a yeah. nice looking movie. I like the music and visuals better in Eight Crazy Nights. From here on out, this show is exclusively Eight Crazy Nights versus Shark Tale. <laughs> uh, that's just gonna be the, 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 the episode for, like, the next, like, 12 episodes of this show. Okay. We're just gonna do that. It won't get old, no. Nope. Well, it will be as entertaining as the first time we brought it up. Just, just you wait until we watch Menorah in the Middle on Hulu. Which, which Hanukkah movie is better, this or an American Tale? <sighs> this okay who's gonna get mad at me for saying I, I don't think i've ever seen american tale and if i have it's been like actual decades like i don't know I, I, i'm not I gonna know get that's mad at you i'm the same fair boat. the 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 only reason i have seen a, an american tale more recently i'll rewatch like it someday for a very for small sure. child american tale sounds like a fun rewatch i think that's the one with the mouse and the hat and the clothes right yeah, the yeah. only reason I've rewatched it is because I did a video on on every movie Abed references in Community. <laughs> is it a good? And film? that was one of them. You think? Uh, Zach, really? that's Alex Yuk. I was going into this being like, oh yeah, it's a good film. I should rewatch that. Like, oh no, no, I really want to rewatch it. 
Oh, sorry, wait, you know so, what, we're going, you know what, I'm voting Hubie Halloween, I just now realized that the meme that came out of Eight Crazy Nights, I hate it. Why did it become a big thing? It's not funny. It's just the poster being, like, redone over and over with stupid other things. I think it's, it's really not funny. funny. It's not fucking funny, Mike. Oh, it is. So next time on Hollow Victories, it's, it's the Christmas episode... And much like last year, it is a half Christmas episode. Um, and the half that ties into Christmas, kind of the same thing this year. Uh, th this is going to be a little bit of a weird one. Although, I, uh, my, Mitzi's mother asked me if I had seen one of these movies, and I said I, I was planning on doing it for Hollow Victories. And that apparently got her interested in the show, so so th th this one's for Mitzi's mom, uh, I guess. It's uh, hell yeah, it, hell yeah. It's it's children's p property, but a slasher movie. It's the mean one versus Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Hmm. All right. <laughs> That's a nice Christmas film. <laughs> That, I mean, that it works. Is. You could have done Banana Splits, too, but maybe they're, maybe that and uh, whatever bad... I had actually, was that movie even bad? I don't know. I It did not receive negative reviews, although I, I'm about to do... I'm about to do all the live-action Hanna-Barbera movies for Drunk Rankings, and that's one of the ones I'm including. I think these two are, like, pretty similar in in terms of, like, what's happening in them. All right, yeah, no, I would agree. I mean, I, again, I haven't watched either of them, but we'll, we'll see, I guess. I was at least curious about uh, the mean one, because I think that's a very specific thing. Where if, like, the Winnie the Pooh one, that one just seems stupid to me. It's like, uh, oh, Winnie the Pooh's in the public domain, so we're going to immediately make a slasher movie about it. But... Not that the mean one looks good to me. I actually think it looks really bad. But I do think it's playing on a more interesting fear, which is a lot of people were creeped out by the makeup of live-action hybrids. Um, where it's like, okay, I mean, that's there's something there. It's kind of similar to, like, taking on, like, an animatronic or something, where it's like, yeah, it's something that you saw when you were a kid that scared you that wasn't supposed to, and no one's done that one specifically yet, so... Sure, let's let's see it. Uh, but the trailer did not look good to me. It still it still looks like a bad movie. I just think it's a more interesting idea. I will we, 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 we'll see. I guess. Um. Uh. Yeah. Zach, is there anything you want to plug? Absolutely not. Just Matt's channel. Go keep watching it, guys. Okay. Just do that thing. Well, I we, we I'll, I'm gonna plug Stewart's channel instead. Hell yeah. <laughs> Because he just did the Fire Emblem AMV video. Alright, Michael, anything to add? Uh, no. Thanks for coming, Zach. It was nice having you on. Yeah, th thank you for being here, Zach. Glad to finally course, have course. you on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, until next time, for my co-host, Michael Shadakel, I am Matt Presents. We will see you in the next one. Peace. That was very delayed. <laughs>